Hello, my name is Sasha Craver, and this is Legal Psych with True Crime MTN. Today, we are going to discuss Gypsy Rose Blanchard's divorce announcement and restraining order from her husband after just three months out of prison. I'm joined with my co-host, Dr. Rachel Needle, a licensed clinical psychologist and forensic expert who is going to help us break this down. Um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard was recently released from prison after serving an eight-year prison sentence. Gypsy pleaded, pled guilty to second-degree murder for her role in the murder of her mom, who abused Gypsy throughout her life. If you watched our last episode on Gypsy Rose Blanchard, we talked a little bit about Gypsy's husband, Ryan Anderson, that she met and married while incarcerated. They got married in July of 2022 and announced their divorce just three months after she was released from prison. Now, how did they meet? They began communicating after Ryan sent Gypsy a letter while she was incarcerated. He said that he did this on a dare by his friend and he did not expect to hear back from her. But when he did respond, they started an email exchange and according to Gypsy, they formed an emotional bond that resulted in their relationship and later marriage while she was in prison. They married in a prison ceremony with plans to have a real wedding when she got out, which unfortunately now isn't going to happen. Now, Rachel, what does this tell you about Ryan? What do you think led him to wanting to marry someone who is incarcerated? So some are attracted to people who have committed crimes. Some are just curious. Some have difficulty maintaining in a relationship with someone who's in person. So having a pen pal is actually easier. For some, you can just totally be yourself. And for others, it's actually the complete opposite where you can literally be anybody that you you wanna be and can kind of create a persona and a personality. Um, some people create a relational fantasy and for others, it's a safer relationship than having one with somebody who is actually there with you. So there are so many different reasons why somebody would reach out, communicate and feel connected to somebody that is um, in prison. And what about Gypsy? I mean, this isn't uncommon. I'm sure she was lonely in prison, but this is someone who has become a celebrity almost overnight. She's gotten a lot of media attention since she's been incarcer incarcerated, and I'm sure she's made a lot of money. Um, I certainly hope she got a prenup. Dr. Rachel, why marry someone that you haven't met outside of the confines of a prison? Isn't that risky for her? Absolutely, but you know there are so many factors that play a role here. So first, having endured the abuse that she did for essentially all of her life, now having a relationship with literally someone who can't hurt you, um, there's no interaction, she's essentially entirely in control, whereas she hasn't been for her entire life. Um, also, someone taking an interest in her probably felt really good. Um, all the attention she had got up until that time was probably negative attention. Um, and also getting to know somebody passes time in prison. It gives you something to look forward to hearing from somebody. And again, going back to this relational fantasy, um, you know, feeling that closeness, or even if it's just a perceived sense of closeness that you haven't felt before can feel really good. So it's easy to feel closer to someone, to feel more connected and to, you know, you know, begin to lust after somebody in that way. Right. And they were, you know, they were married successfully, it seemed, for about a year while she was incarcerated. And then it only took three months of her being out of prison to realize that I suppose they weren't a very good match. Now, um, there were a few reasons, she says, why they got a divorce. Um, Gypsy reportedly told her friends that Ryan was very argumentative and made her feel like she couldn't do anything right. Um, something that probably reminded her a little bit of her mom. Um, and was probably very triggering for her. Also, there was some jealousy over her spending time with her dad, which I thought was odd. Um, he was also allegedly a food hoarder and she didn't like his snoring habits. <laughs> um, three months of all of that and she was out the door. What's your take, Dr. H? So first, she was married successfully at first. So, you know, I think that's something that's interesting where we, we always assume because we hear about people saying together that it's a healthy and good relationship. So. From the bat, we don't know how healthy this relationship is. We do know that, you know, developmentally, she, you know, didn't have a chance to kind of um, grow and having endured that abuse during the most critical time, it's going to be hard for her to maintain that healthy attachment and healthy relationship. But, um, you know, in terms of, of being annoyed by habits, I mean, she met him and she didn't have an opportunity to get to know him, to get to know his habits what it's like to spend long periods of time with him and so much more that you miss when you don't actually get to spend 
time with somebody. Um, and habits of others can always be annoying, right? That we all probably get annoyed with some things that our significant others do, um, even our friends. But being able to have conversations around them, surrender to some of the things when in a relationship it is what it takes when you're in a healthy relationship, right? And you love other things about them. So when you feel good about a relationship, when you you know feel connected to someone, some of these little things don't matter as much, um, but definitely are much more heightened in certain situations. So again, didn't get a chance to be around him at all. They both spent time fantasizing about each other because that's all they were able to do when they weren't able to, to see each other. And really their communication wasn't very frequent. It was as frequent as it can be based on the, the circumstance. So when you realize that the fantasy doesn't exactly match up with the reality, you start to think, you know, think, think about things a little differently. Yeah, I did think it was interesting that she listed the snoring habits and food hoarding habits as one of the reasons they got a divorce. I mean, that's usually you don't hear that as as a reason why someone gets a divorce. It's usually, you know, you put up with someone's little intricacies and things that you might not like about them because you love the person overall. You know, you accept those little things. Obviously, the snoring habits, that's not something that she, you know, have any idea of with her being incarcerated and now she's out of jail. But the argumentative side of him and um, feeling pressured. I mean, those are bigger issues. And, you know, now after they filed for divorce, she has notably also filed for a restraining order. And in response, he did so as well, but she filed for the restraining order first. So there might be some indication there that she feels unsafe in some capacity. She was also spotted with her ex-fiance right after the divorce rumors broke. Um, now, before she met Ryan in prison, she had another fiance named Ken Erker. They also met while Gypsy was in prison through a pen pal program. They got engaged in 2018, but broke up in 2019. And then she went on to meet Ryan after that. So after the media catches on to her divorce from Ryan, she's actually seen out and about with Ken, her ex fiance, getting tattoos. And now they have announced that they are dating again. So she is now dating her ex-fiance from prison again after her divorce was announced from Ryan. This seems like irrational behavior, right? It almost feels like she didn't get to experience her teen years and her young adulthood like a normal person, so she seems to be acting out of it. Dr. Rachel, what do you make of this? So first, you're exactly right in terms of types of behavior. Like she, you know, it's, it's almost like she's not able to kind of make decisions to kind of weigh you know, the good, the less good, think about potential consequences or, you know, in terms of, you know, being abused for most of her developmental years, that's when most of us learn how to have healthy relationships, how to form connections. She had only her mother who betrayed her in so many ways. So after this, the length of abuse that she um, endured, it's not surprising that she would have difficulty with relationships, with the basic needs for love and affection. So she went from being controlled by her mother to being in a controlled environment in prison. And now not only is she free, but she has like a ton of media attention, people always watching her, commenting on her. And we see her like she's jumping from relationship to the relationship. She might not feel good about herself, but she's like, she's, we're not likely to choose people that are the best fit for us or that are in the best place in their own lives when we're not. So, you know, I think for somebody like this or, or in a situation similar, really you need, a, you know, it, it's important that you get professional help, right? To process all that has happened probably on a long-term basis and start to form other types of relationships before you go strictly into a romantic relationship with someone, because that's not likely to go well. And it gives you someone else that you'll end up potentially dependent on or that isn't the best um, fit for you um, and what you need in your life. So she's definitely going to need some positive, healthy relational influences in her life at some point. And I do hope that she gets that soon and that she's able to kind of put all this media attention to the side and live a life that is going to be healthy for her. And that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, she certainly has a lot of adjusting to do outside of prison. I mean, this is really the first time in her life that she's had real freedom. Um, she did recently comment in an interview that the media frenzy after her prison release has hurt her mental health. Um, I'm hoping that she takes some needed time out of the spotlight in order to heal and grow in a normal way, if possible. She also said that she is in no rush with Ken and that she wants to see where this new relationship takes her. Um, we will keep you all updated as this progresses.
So we want to hear from all of you. Please comment on this video and let us know what you think. Also, if you have any requests for cases or future videos, please let us know. I'm Dr. Rachel Needle and I'm with my co-host Sasha Craver and this is Legal Psych by True Crime MTN. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, aka the Florida Lawman here on the fastest growing true crime channel, True Crime MTN. And we'll see you next time.